Welcome to our lecture online. Some very typical problems you will encounter using Coulomb's law is we have a number of charges on a line and you're trying to determine the force of one of the charges due to the presence of the other charges. Now keep in mind that the charges are fixed, they're nailed down, they can't move, but they will, there will be interacting forces between them. So when we take a look at our first example here, it says what is the force on Q1 due to the presence of the other two charges? And so we can see that because of the charge Q2, they're opposite in charge, so there'll be a force of attraction, a force to the right on this charge. And because of that charge there being positive, there will be a repulsive force, so that the force between those two charges will be to the left on this charge right here. So all we have to do then is find the magnitude of F12 and the magnitude of F13, the, the force between these two charges and those two charges, and then vectorially add them up. Over here we're asked to find the force on the middle charge, Q2, due to the presence of 1 and 3. So here again we draw the vectors, we have a vector in this direction saying this, this charge is being attracted to the left due to this charge, and this charge is being attracted to the right due to this charge, so therefore we feel those two forces. Probably want to put little arrows on them because we realize that they're vectors, like this, and now we need to find the magnitude between 2 and 3 as well. So once we have those three magnitudes, we can then do the vector sum. So let's go ahead and do that, plug in the numbers and see what we get. This is 9 times 10 to the 9th. So Q1 is 8 times 10 to the minus 6. Q2 is 6 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by the distance between them squared, which is 2 squared. And let's see what we get. So we have 9e to the 9th times 8e to the 6th minus times 6e to the 6th minus divided by 4 equals, and we get 0 0.108. 0 0.108 newtons. And keep in mind that even though this is a negative charge, we don't have to put a negative there because we're looking for the magnitude of the force. For the next one, 9 times 10 to the 9th times Q1, which is 8 times 10 to the minus 6. Here we have uh, 4 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided by the distance squared, which is 5 squared. And let's see what we get there. So 9e to the 9th times 8e to the 6 minus times 4e to the 6 minus divided by 25. And we get 0 0.012 rounded off. 0.012 newtons. All right, so now we have those two. Now we're ready to do the vector sum. So what we can say here is that the net force or the total force is equal to F12 is to the right, so that's a positive uh, force in the, the positive direction. So we have 0 0.108 newtons in the positive x direction. The next one is to the left, so that's a negative 0.012 newtons in the x direction and so the net result is that we have 0.096 newtons in the x direction and so that is the force, the net force or total force on Q1 due to the presence of the other two charges. So now for comparison we'll go ahead and work this one out as well. So we need a third magnitude here, so let's plug in the numbers. Q2 is 6 times 10 to the minus 6. Q3 is 4 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by between 2 and 3 is 3 squared. And so that is equal to 9e to the 9th times 6e to the 6 minus times 4e to the 6 minus and divide that by 9 and we get 0.024. 0.024 newtons and now we're ready to calculate the net force on that one so the total force on let's see here total force on the middle charge right on q2 is going to be this force right here which is to the right f23 which we have right here so this is equal to a positive 0.024 newtons in the positive x direction and then this one is to the left that's f12 we have the magnitude there that's a negative 0.18 so 
minus 0 0.108 newtons in the x direction. So now this would then add up to, subtract 24 from that, that's uh, 84, negative 84, so negative 0 0.084 newtons in the x direction, and that is the total force on the second charge due to the presence of the other two. And so hopefully by those two examples, you can now get the pattern of that, and that is how you calculate the force of one charge due to the presence of the others when they're all on a single line. What if they're not on a single line? Well, for that, we need to show you another example.